At Shavington Primary School we've, we've had children with attachment difficulties for a number of years and worked really closely um, with the virtual school and the educational psychologist to put in place support for children with, with quite complex needs. Um, and actually that's been really effective. Uh, the whole school really valued the, the approach that we'd taken and the support that was going in. But it tended to be delivered for individual children um, and we didn't want that support to feel uh, isolated. We wanted it to be an inclusive approach. So we saw the project as an opportunity to roll out an approach that had worked for a number of children to the whole school. So Adelaide School decided that we wanted to take part in the attachment project because we are an emotional and social and mental health difficulties school, special needs school. Um, we work with a large amount of pupils that have attachment difficulties. Um, when the opportunity came up, it was clear that three staff from our team felt very strongly about attachment and we kind of wanted to take this project forward um, and it, so we kind of volunteered. Because Adelaide School works with children with social, emotional and mental health problems, um, it's been a long-standing understanding that um, children have got attachment issues and we believe that a lot of the SEMH population have those issues. Um, my master's was in attachment and I go around with a soapbox at school going on about it at all times. Um, we've got a lot of members of staff at Adelaide that understand a lot about attachment issues um, and a lot of children that benefit from attachment related strategies and therefore we wanted to roll out the understanding to other schools and to put in place support for them to enable them to support other children with attachment difficulties in a similar way. We decided to take part in the attachment research project because um, we really benefited from the training that we had on attachment, emotion coaching and building resilience and it was something that we wanted to take on at a whole school level. Um, we also had quite a specific need um, a child displaying quite challenging behaviour as a result of his um, attachment difficulties. So the main reason we decided to take the project on was um, we'd had a change of leadership and school had been in a bit of turmoil. We'd noticed there was lots of children spending time out of class. Um, relationships between staff, pupils, parents were sort of a bit fraught and we wanted to focus our attention on those relationships and, and attachments really uh, in order to, to benefit everybody in our, in our school. Well we started looking at different children and thinking that they're all individuals and we're looking at their different backgrounds and started to think more about their behaviours and looking past some of their behaviours and looking why are there reasons for these and then also wanting to support children with their different emotions because we're all individuals and every child is going to react differently in different situations and we wanted to make sure that we could give them the best support and platform in their school life which will give them the foundations for their future. Our school takes pupils from year five onwards, um, so we work quite close with the local primary schools and identify needs before pupils come to our school. Um, we'd identified prior to taking part in this project that attachment was something that wasn't very well understood in the local area um, and we identified that as a need that here in Cheshire that so we needed more training around attachment and a better understanding by teachers and staff working with pupils um, to help develop skills to work with those pupils and to help move those pupils forward. We wanted to kind of raise awareness of um, of attachment and emotion coaching because I think some uh, some staff felt that it was only cared for children that um, might have an attachment difficulty whereas when we came on the training we found that it was maybe a bit more widespread than that and um, but also with this specific need we felt that through this research we could address this problem um, with this child and help him in, in being able to flourish really. So our cohort um, is, is quite a tricky cohort and we have lots of families who um, who struggle or in social housing or who don't work um, and they they often come to school and tell us that they're struggling with behaviours in their home. Um, where we were also noticing that the children who um, are from those particular families were not making the progress that we would like them to make uh, with their learning and often they were the children that were out of the classroom um, seeking adults. So.
we wanted to make sure that we were addressing those issues. We've had we've had a number of children over the years with with um, attachment difficulties who had difficulties managing their emotions, um, and we we really felt that emotion coaching was a good strategy. Um, it was really it's been a really interesting project because. As part of the project, we wanted to look at a baseline assessment of our children's current understanding. Um, and when we, when we investigated, before we'd even started the project, we realised that a lot of our children um, didn't really have a deep understanding of how adults could help them to manage their emotions. So we realised that actually all of the children in our school were going to benefit from this, which was interesting because we started it thinking that perhaps the project was for a few children and realised that it had a tremendous benefit to every single child in the school. We were finding with some children that their reactions to certain situations um, we may not have been able to support in the best way we could have done. And we wanted also to be able to give staff more knowledge about dealing with children with certain behavioural issues or attachment issues because we felt that staff didn't really have the best knowledge to um, approach children or give them, we didn't have the best understanding on how to deal with them because as staff body we didn't have the full understanding. Well, our initial plan was to go into six schools. Uh, the schools would identify someone with an attachment difficulty. We would then support them over a period of time and then evaluate that. However, <laughs> it unfortunately didn't work um, because in order for schools to identify someone with an attachment dis disorder or difficulty and ask for help, they have to know what it is. Um, so what we found was it was a struggle to, to find those children in that way. So instead of working like that, what we did is we um, went into a range of schools doing challenging behaviour training and then also uh, supported the schools to understand what attachment was. And through that, we, we then put in some attachment uh, related uh, support and strategies. So by observing individual children that the schools thought had challenging behaviour, what we identified was children with attachment difficulties. Then we worked with the schools to put in an action plan and strategies that would support those children so that they would make more progress and would support the schools to enable them to develop what they were doing with the children. Um, and then after six weeks we went back and evaluated the progress that the children had made uh, through that, um, which on the whole was very positive. Uh, however, what we did realise is that you know it's an increasing and ongoing job to make sure that all members of staff who work in schools understand how attachment works and therefore are enabled to put the strategies in place that supports those children. The activities that we did as part of the attachment research project were initially we disseminated the training that we had had to all staff, staff members as part of the inset day um, so that it was a consistent approach. Um, then with the individual child we um, adopted the emotion coaching approach so we um, were labelling and validating his feelings um, we were setting limits on his behaviour and then we were problem solving with the child. We also created a safe space in school, um, so we transformed a particular room that we had and um, made it a really soft nurturing space. So we had like a wigwam, cushions, uh, puppets, toys, feelings, books, loads of things in there that would support his emotional development. Um, and it was used as an area where we could um, withdraw him if he needed to co-regulate with a significant adult. Um, and it was also used as, as a place where we would deliver bespoke emotion coaching sessions. Um, we also uh, used social stories. So nearing the end of this research project, um, the child actually um, had a house and school move so as a result we used a social story to support him with those uh, issues and also created uh, a book which we used as a transitional object entitled All About Me and that was uh, made in collaboration with the child um, as something that he could then go and uh, share with um, staff in his new setting. Uh, we also used um, visual cues, so we used uh, smiley faces um, that we would show him and he also had his own set, so he could come and show us if that was how he was feeling. 
um, and we used it as a way of reinforcing um, positive behaviour. We also, as well as disseminating the training to staff, we also spoke to the child carers about the emotion coaching approach so that we could have a consistent approach between school and home and that was something they um, were really grateful for. Um, so we implemented a home school communication book so that, um, so that we could record instances where we'd use the approach and that was used as part of our data collection um, but it also was used to um, record changes at school or at home. So when our new leadership team came into school, they uh, implemented a learning mentor, which was me, um, and I had a room and we were, we were set with the task of um, looking at all of these children who were struggling and what interventions were we gonna put in place for them, um, how we were going to monitor their behaviors, uh, the time that was spent in class and their progress, and as we were thinking about doing that, this attachment awareness project came up and we thought this is the perfect opportunity to um, put together a, a case file of pupils and look really, really closely at how supporting relationships can support their learning and, and accelerate that. So we looked at attachment friendly practice and then we introduced emotion coaching as something new. Um, and we went through the stages of emotion coaching and we went through how to do emotion coaching and explained it's not an intervention, it's not something that happens once a week in a particular room with a particular adult, which I think w could have been the perception of staff that, that it could have been seen as an intervention. Um, we wanted staff to realise that it wasn't, that it was actually part of our practice. Um, in order to make it part of our practice and not just pay lip service to it, we did provide a timetabled session a week and we, we encouraged, we strongly encouraged staff to, once a week, to take children out of their comfort zone and to plan in a session whereby children were given activities that were going to be challenging. And the reason for that is it would give us opportunities to notice when children were feeling frustrated, notice when children were feeling jealous, um, notice when children were feeling angry. And then emotion coaching works on labelling those emotions uh, and in not in a confrontational way. So it's not saying to a child, oh, you're feeling jealous. It's saying to a child, you're feeling jealous right now and that's okay I can understand you feeling jealous because this table have got all the equipment that they need to complete this task and your table haven't but then saying to children how are we going to manage that you're feeling jealous um, so it's putting it's it's labeling that emotion helping them to understand it and then it's also identifying when things go wrong and saying okay I can see that you're feeling jealous but actually when you're feeling jealous um, it's not okay to shout at the other table. You've got to find another way of doing that. So you're putting limits on the behavior that's coming in. But, but in a non-confrontational, you're not telling a child that having that emotion is wrong. You're saying, I get that emotion. I get exactly that you're feeling that way. And actually, I empathize with you. I understand that you feel that way. I can see this situation is making you jealous. Then you work on problem solving with the child. Say, so what could we do so that next time you do that, how can we? How could you resolve that situation uh, and deal with that jealousy and actually, you know, ultimately achieve what you want to achieve? You know, get that task completed without resorting to shouting or storming over and stealing something from the other table. Well, the first thing we started with was staff training. We realised before we implement anything into school, staff body had to have a full understanding of attachment why children may react in certain ways and what we can do to support them and let them be able to identify their own emotions and understand situations themselves. So all staff were trained from head teachers, deputies, class teachers, dinner ladies, um, site maintenance officer, everyone was trained. So then we were all doing a whole school approach. Everyone's seen from the same thing sheet, you know, and um, we could deliver it as a whole school approach there. Then we moved on to um, creating classrooms to be a calming environment. Every classroom was given a tent, so children, if they felt they needed time out or if they had felt they become emotions were becoming to take over, it was time for the tent. You know, as adults, we know we need time out, so why wouldn't we do that for children? We had also cool down boxes, we called them. So every class had a cool down box and it may have sensory items in there. It may have been some puzzles. It may have been little sand timers, just something to help the children 
calm themselves down and then once they're in that time ready then they can come and speak to an adult to um, talk things through. It was quite difficult when doing the outreach project because it became clear quite quickly that not all schools had a great understanding of attachment. Some of the children that we were referred um, were referred for behavioural difficulties or social and communication difficulties. Um, so we kind of changed our project a little bit in the running and we um, went out to meet with those pupils that were identified as behavioural difficulties and when we kind of worked with staff and the pupils we unpicked the underlying those problems was actually attachment um, and we found that working with those staff quite closely um, staff had a better understanding of what attachment was within those schools and were able to identify the needs. Um, I also feel that having worked in the 19, 19 primary schools that um, the staff there now have a better understanding to be able to recognise attachment within different pupils and use the skills that we kind of work together to build to to work with all of those pupils in the school, not just the 19 that we identified had attachment difficulties. Um, the changes that we saw at Edgerton as a result of this research project were that staff were better able to meet the needs of children with attachment difficulties. Um, emotion coaching was used as a consistent approach by staff. Um, with the specific pupil, we identified that um, he was able to co-regulate um, more quickly with his specific adult, which meant that um, he was better able, able to manage his emotions. Um, when the adult was able to remain calm, he was be able to calm more quickly as a result. Um, and then we identified that he was communicating more positively. There's been huge changes in children's behaviour. Um, we now don't have children storming out of classrooms. We don't have children um, chucking things about. We don't have children shouting at adults anymore. Um, they use the Rainbow Room as a place to access um, support when they need help with, their, with problem solving. The emphasis is still very much on the child solving the problem or helping to solve the problem. They are part of the solution, um, but, but they know where to seek support when things are getting too tricky for them. I think also um, teaching them about the brain and the way that the brain works with the fl flight, fight, freeze response um, has helped children to understand that they can't think properly when they're in that situation so they need time to calm down they're now very accepting of the strategies that we offer so if we're asking a child to go and use time out um, we'll explain to them you know you need to use time out because you flipped your lid and we can't sort this problem out whilst you're in in this frame of mind and they're very very accepting of that now yeah, in terms of the changes that we saw i think it really it really worked to secure relationships i think it it helped uh, staff to realise the importance of developing a connection. I remember on the training we talked about uh, connection before correction and, and everybody would agree with that but I think it really helps staff to see the importance of explaining to a child and connecting with them and empathising with the emotions that a child felt. Um, you know, so if there was negative behaviour um, and that secured better relationships generally. Uh, we did a survey with children at the start um, and we asked some quite challenging questions in our survey and children were really honest um, and they said that sometimes they felt that they couldn't talk to adults about feelings, they didn't necessarily see the importance of that. At the end of the project it really showed that children felt that they could talk to adults and recognise the value of talking to adults about their feelings and their emotions. Um, so I think it did, it, it improved relationships um, across the school, uh, but, but particularly relationships when things perhaps weren't going so well for a child, when a child had strong emotions, it helped the children to realise the importance of talking um, to an adult about those emotions and that the adult was prepared to listen and there for them. The whole, whole school culture has changed completely. You know, before it used to be, oh, they've behaved like that, they've behaved like this, oh, that's, that's not right. And now we're looking at more of why have they behaved like that, what can I do to go and support them. 
the way the uh, adults are talking to children, oh, it's just wonderful to see now. You know, it's very much a much more calmer um, conversations going on, calmer classrooms, and also making sure that staff, we all know now that it's okay that we're not straight away writing in an English book, that if we need to talk something through, let's talk that through, because if we haven't got that first bit ready, then you can forget even trying to write in your books, doing some work. So the supportive, culture of the school has just really it's embedded throughout wherever you go and I would also find that children are taking more responsibility for their emotions as well playtime is a prime example we've got a safe play unit so at lunch times and play times they can go there if they feel that something's not quite right or if they feel that anger might be taking over or frustration they can take themselves there and then there's always an adult there to talk things through or if they don't want to talk it through just a safe place for them to go for a bit of cool down time so that's had a real impact and just children being taking responsibility. I think um, it's really important for all professionals working in schools to understand what attachment disorders are and attachment in general. The strategies you use to support children with an attachment disorder are just good strategies that work for all children and I think we need to be thinking a little bit more on the things that underpin behaviour. So um, our plan at Adelaide and hopefully the plan across the county is to continue to raise the priority of attachment to make sure that all people in all schools understand what it is and understand what they can do about it. Children with attachment disorders all look very different um, but if we can all work together to share strategies then hopefully we can, we can build up a repertoire and we can build up an area of expertise um, within the county so that any child with an attachment disorder can have the level of support that they need in whatever school they're in to make sure that we can effectively meet their needs and they can make progress in all areas. I think we could sustain this by sharing our research findings both within our setting and with other settings who feel that they could um, benefit from this approach. I also think that by supporting staff in school, um, in our setting, we're supporting their professional development. So um, if they're struggling with a child with attachment difficulties, then, then there is support there for them within school. Um, also supporting staff in identifying children um, who will benefit from the emotion coaching approach. And then um, with specific children that have already been identified, supporting them in developing their problem so solving skills so that they are then able to cope with uh, overwhelming feelings and also um, to identify when they might need an adult for help. So at Manor Park we're sustaining the changes we've made by um, trying to roll out the, the teaching that we've done to the children and the intervention that we've given to those children uh, in terms of healthy relationships and healthy minds and understanding the brain, understanding each other um, and their parents <laughs> as well. Um, we're trying to roll that out to the rest of the school now so it's not just targeted children who are receiving that intervention, it's, it's a whole school approach and it's really working. They're, they're really understanding each other. Um, staff are asking uh, why rather than what are you doing and the children are feeling like they're listened to which is great. In terms of sustaining the project, the, the project and the focus that we had has allowed us to embed it within our school practice. Um, it fits really well with our school ethos and values um, and it's something that we talk about routinely. Um, we use the phrase emotion coaching throughout the school. Everyone knows what that is. It's not an isolated thing so it, it's carried on. Um, We've also made sure that new members of staff coming in are trained on what emotion coaching is um, and we've provided training for some um, uh, trainee teachers who are in our school at the moment. We've, we've done sessions for them on emotion coaching which they found really interesting. Um, our next steps in terms of really embedding it are going to be to roll it out to parents. So that's our plan. Our hope over the next year is that we can explain to parents the approach so that they can use the same approach at home. I think to be able to stay in it, staff have always got to be trained and have an awareness of attachment and the different strategies that could be put in place. Because obviously in school, it's normal to have changeover of staff, staff are leaving, you have new members of staff. We really need to make sure that that continual training is happening and that they have a full awareness. Because as soon as we have a couple of people that may not have the full understanding or awareness, then that's when we can start to have a few gaps in the 
and the whole school culture with it. One of, our, one of the issues that we had with the project was that schools often came to us for support when it was almost too late because they hadn't identified the need for attachment support earlier on. Um, if we could kind of get attachment training out there to all staff, um, I think that would ensure that children are kept in mainstream education for longer, that their needs are met earlier, that their experience of education is a happier and more enjoyable one. Well, if, if schools are attachment friendly, they become good places to be. People feel settled there, they feel a sense of belonging and they feel safe and they achieve. So if we raise the priority of attachment through all of our schools in Cheshire East, then hopefully that should lead to less negative behaviour or negative behaviour that we can understand and that we can meet the children's needs in those, those senses, in those places, should I say. Um, I would hope that if, attach, if attach, the priority of attachment is raised, then schools feel more empowered to meet the needs of individual children, which allows them to make better progress. I think if this approach was adopted more widely, then children would be better supported. Um, they would be able to identify their own emotions and self-regulate. Um, adults would be able to feel more confident in supporting these children in schools and I also feel that the children will be able to make links between their feelings, emotions, thoughts and behaviour. So I think if we were to roll this out everywhere, uh, we'd see a massive shift in, in the way that we communicate with young people. I think that um, we need to remember that they are just little human beings. They're not, they're not children who we tell what to do, who, who we do things to. We should be working with them and, and working hard at relationships because they are human beings. How, you know, how we would want to be treated and spoken to and respected, that, that has to happen with every child in every school everywhere. At Shavington Primary School, we felt that, that by taking this approach with all our children has, has really benefited our relationships with children. It, it, we're closer. We, it's, and I think if all schools did this, there would be, the, it, it could really benefit children's mental health. It could really have a very powerful impact on improving children's resilience and um, bounce, bounce back ability. It's that ability when things aren't quite going the way you'd hope they go to bounce back. Um, and would enable children to be better able to respond to, to difficult emotions, to difficult situations, um, and to be that bit more resilient. It's, we're still on a journey. You know, all our children, it's a process that you, it's not something you do once, it's something you've got to keep doing. Um, but I think by engaging in emotion coaching, by sharing that with your whole staff, I would say that it brings you together as a community as well and gives you a good structure to talk about emotions and gives everybody a good way into developing those discussions with, with children of all ages, but also with the adults in your school community as well. Oh, I just think it'd be brilliant for, it's giving children a handle of their own emotions, their own responsibility, which these are the, it's a life skill. We're talking about you know, very young children here being able to identify if they're frustrated, if they're angry, and then making the right choices and what they need to do when they're feeling that emotion. And if as soon as they've got that understanding and they're doing that correctly, then hopefully that's embedded in them. So when they're becoming teenagers and then you're adults in a workplace, they've got that self-regulation and understanding. And also they can impact that onto others and showing empathy and sympathy towards others. So I think it would just be wonderful if all schools were on board because we've seen the benefits. So I can, I can undoubtedly say that other schools would see those benefits too.